is up, guys? Josh with Navigate the Wild. And today, we're going to get some ground done, ground venison, that is, so we can get it into the freezer and, more importantly, in my belly. Let's check it out. If you're going to step into the world of grinding your own meat, which I love, it's very fun. You get great grind blends for your home, for your family. It really helps clean up some of the odd bits and pieces of the venison that you're not really sure of, or maybe you don't really want to uh, eat. Um, maybe it's a little more chewy. You just don't have the time to invest in, you know, smoking something or uh, slow cooking something. Or you're a family like ours. My family, we have five of us here, and we eat a lot of burger, and I love it. My family loves it. Chilies, pasta sauces, meatloafs, but most importantly, burgers. We absolutely love burgers. I don't mind having a ton of ground because we're gonna go through it. There's a small family owned grocery store locally and they provide me with my fat content because remember venison, it's a game meat, very lean. I like the 80-20 ratio. And so for every four pounds of venison, I add a pound of fat. I can get pork, I can get beef, but I go with the beef. I think it has a little more flavor to it. And so I picked up 16 pounds of beef fat today, beef trimmings that we're gonna trim up, get ready for the, for the grind. I'm gonna take you through the whole process. Whatever's left over, we'll just vacuum seal along with everything else during that process, and I'll save it. If we get another deer, if we get another pig, I'll have fat content to be able to add to. So all these pieces of equipment, they can be added to your uh, gear list over time. But don't feel like you have to buy this stuff at all, all at once. There's so much gear that you get into between the field and actually taking of game and then to the kitchen. And so I'm gonna kind of show you what my setup looks like out in my garage, AKA the Navigate the Wild Studios and where I store things, how I store things, and then we'll get into uh, how I set up to prep for grinding meat. So what we have here, these are a few different bins that have purpose. On the right is my wife's camo and older camo that I don't wear anymore. On the middle is my first light gear. And this far left one is all my processing equipment. So right out the gate, you can see I have three small bins and one big LEM bin, LEM on the side. LEM makes fantastic food processing, meat processing, butchering stuff. So if you can get your hands on those, great. I've even seen gray bins at Sam's, three for 14 that are slightly bigger than these middle ones, but they stack together well. And this is kind of like my hunting slash shooting servicing type of setup here, right? So I don't have a ton of room. So these kind of live on top of my bin. So I always have butcher tape and, uh, you know, some type of Sharpie. And this just helps cut bush butcher paper, which we'll show you later. I acquired that little thing at some point. When you open this up, what we have here is mainly our LEM Big Bite, rolls of vacuum seal, my vacuum sealer, which is just the food saver one. This is where all of my uh, grinding equipment and f uh, meat preserving equipment sits. So we're gonna pull this thing out, get it set up, and then I'll show you what I do with the internals while we're waiting. To begin with, you want a handful of things. Cutting board is an essential tool. It's great to have a large cutting board. I think I got this one at Sam's. I got the LEM Big Bite here. All the pieces that we're gonna push meat through are in the freezer right now, and we're gonna let them get cold. You want them as cold as possible. And then I'm gonna use some olive oil and just lightly coat the plate, the auger, the blade, just to help with heat retention. 
and stress on the motor. I also have Victoria Knox boning knife, just helps to uh, cut things up. I love Victoria Knox, they're easy to get an edge on and they're pretty affordable. So I, all of my kitchen knives are basically Victoria Knox. This is just a food scale, that way we can measure uh, how much fat we're gonna end up with, which I'll show you that in a second. Metal bowls, I have a big one with the meat. And then this one here, uh, and this is going to basically go on here. I'm gonna zero out the bowl itself. And then we are going to weigh the fat. And I'm gonna try to get like, this is 16 pounds of beef fat before we start trimming it all up. Um, I'm probably gonna get about six pounds in here. I don't know how much we're gonna need just yet. I gotta measure out how much actual grind we have. So that'll be the next step. Uh, so what you do, turn that on. It's already zeroed out. I'm gonna use a small one. And we're gonna trim all this up so we can go through the meat grinder, it's pretty frozen. Five, that's six, okay. The rest of this, I'm gonna vacuum seal after I trim it or cut it down to size and we'll put it in the freezer because it'll stay. For right now, we're just gonna put it in the fridge. The goal here is to take this fat and we wanna cut it up. We wanna get these in chunks that we can get through with relative ease. So I just, you know, nothing crazy. This is all trim off of different cuts of beef from the local butcher store. It's still pretty cold, which is great. You want cold meat. You want close to frozen meat. So right now I have our bowl of grind in the freezer getting cold because it's been in the fridge. This is cold enough, so that's great. Once this is all trimmed in the sp pieces that we can work with, we'll put it in the uh, fridge because it's so cold and that'll help it break apart a little bit as well. You know, if you gotta sharpen your blade, you sharpen your blade, you take time, you know? It's just, it's very satisfying being able to grind your own burger. I had a kid come over, uh, a young man at church and we were talking and he's asking more and more questions about um, hunting and different things like that. And so we started talking about burgers because he loves burgers. And I said, yeah, I grind my own burger meat. And he was like, you do? I was like, oh yeah, dude, it's the best. And so then he was able to come over for Halloween and we did burgers. And he was like, this is, this is just the best burger I've ever had. It's just really fun to be able to, you know, bless others with stuff like this. Cuisine is important. What I can do with this is equally as important as taking it. And so I really wanted to be able to make something delicious for my family and friends. That, that was a big part of hunting. Like I did, I got into hunting for meat. If horns are attached to it, that's even better. But my first goal is to provide meat for my family that is healthy and free range and no hormones, no antibiotics. That's what I got into hunting to do. That's what I wanted to do. That's what if I'm mentoring anybody in the woods, if I pass anything along, um, when it comes to YouTube, our channel, and I'm encouraging you to get out into the woods, the goal would be to also invest in the kitchen. Learn how to do great meals with the meat that you have been provided. Here's an essential uh, piece of kit. If you've been thinking about it, you're on the fence are Golly Game Bags. They're reusable, washable. These are four seasons old. They're still running hard. When it goes into the fridge, I keep it in a bowl like this and I cover it with the Argali Game Bag or I'll put before I process it, cause I'll, I'll let it sit in the fridge for a week on the bone and I'll just cover this with the Argali Game Bag, the pieces of meat that are in there, right? But what we're gonna do this is all my grind. So this is shoulder meat, neck meat, shank meat, and any bits and pieces uh, that are left over from 
the hams that I can scrape off or whatever. Okay, so we're gonna transfer it into the bin, weigh this bowl, clean this bowl out, the meat goes back into the bowl, and then we'll know how much fat we actually need. And then from there, we will take the big LEM bin, we will add the meat and the fat, mix it up, and then we're gonna prep our grinder to start grinding ground venison. This is very cold, it's probably, you know, 38 degrees, 39 degrees, 40 degrees, but it's not frozen yet, a little more cold. I like my hands to hurt when I start grinding this stuff up. Food scale, make sure it's on pounds. The bowl is zeroed out. Now in goes the grind, just shy, 16 pounds. So we're gonna want around four pounds of fat, give or take a little. Fat goes in. So this is gonna go into the freezer, uncovered, and we're just gonna let it keep getting cold while we set everything up. I bought a knockoff foot pedal for this grinder. It's worth its weight in gold, okay? What it does is it just allows you to not have to rush and it doesn't continually add heat to the motor. We're gonna go ahead and pull out all of our pieces to assemble our grinder. You'll see what that looks like and how we just oil everything up quick. For those wondering, this is the Big Bite 8. You can tell how cold it is. Slide it in. Some guys say, let this stuff sit in the freezer for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna do two grinds. I'm gonna do a coarse, and I'm going to do a fine. There's the blade. That's our coarse grind. And then this screws on. For the coarse grind, I almost never need the plunger. For the fine, I might. Uh, I think this is a half horsepower. I'm gonna add a bunch of meat up here, and then we're just gonna start grinding it coarsely uh, to begin with. Here we go. And you can see it just coming through coarse. We're gonna end up with about 20 pounds of venison. Now, once I get through with this initial one, just to clean things out, look at that beautiful meat and fat. I will put a handful of ice cubes through as well, and I only do one at a time because it will freeze up and bind up in this LEM. So I just, nice and neat, nice and easy, and that'll help just push any bits of fat, and you'll start, you know, you'll see the ice come through the plate, and you know that everything is pretty clean it'll look much more appealing in the fine grind. The fine grind just is like where the magic happens. Make some room. We're kind of maxing out this bin. And I have just a little bit left. I think we can fit it. Now, once we grind all this, it's gonna go back into the freezer while I clean up and set up for the fine grind. So like I was saying, a couple ice cubes, and we're just gonna focus in down here as we drop a few ice cubes in. And that's just pushing through any leftover fat or meat that's been bound up. Now you can kind of see it's pushing through, oh, it's pushing through ice. You could actually see it, All right? See that? So we know, for the most part, that blade is clean. Now all we're doing, I put paper towel here just to catch whatever's left. I always get a little fat bound up. We're going to pull this out. And push around the blade. Goes back in. Now we've got our fine blade. It's gonna pop on, and this one goes back on. I, I just clean everything at once. I don't take one blade out and then start cleaning it, and it's just easier for me to do it. And I do it first outside in a bin, 
and I'll use my hose. That way I have quite a bit of pressure to be able to clean that off. It knocks all the fat and all that stuff off. This is where the magic happens as far as I'm concerned. We went with the coarse ground. Now we're going with the fine grind, right? This is where we get into using the plunger a little more. Okay, let's, let's get going. And look how nice that blends, man. Just beautiful. Beautiful ground. I get so excited. But if it starts to bind up a little bit or slow down the feed, you just take your plunger and you don't force it down. You just allow the plunger to kind of sit on top. <clears throat> and what it does is the plunger doesn't allow it to back up on itself. All right, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's the plunger. Plunger goes in the top. And it's just... I'm not applying pressure, it's just going down, right? And it just doesn't allow that auger to back up at all. You don't want to get to where you're pushing down because then you're putting undue stress on that motor. And especially with a cheaper grinder that has plastic gears, like they'll just strip and you're screwed. You just wasted money. But look at that grind, man. The fat's all mixed in with the venison. I mean, the, the, the coarse grind is great, but man, the fine grind is where it's at. That's where you really get a good mixture of the two. Just smells really fresh. And again, we'll grind a full hopper. And then we'll just push it forward. Make room for the, the next batch. We like our burgers a little larger, so we'll do, you know, two pounds in one package or something. I like to try to shoot for like 60 pounds of ground. So this is 20 if I get a doe during doe week, which opens up soon, and then I get another deer, maybe with a doe tag, if I'm fortunate enough to get my hands on one, you know, probably another... 30 pounds of grind so that puts us right there and then i got one i got a deer during bow season opening weekend so that's another you know let's say you know another 10 pounds so it puts us at about 60 pounds of ground for the season that's not bad man i'll give a little away and then we'll keep the rest for us and it will carry us through to september you know and i'll still buy ground beef but what this does is it offsets and it allows me to buy grass fed grass finished beef or lamb or whatever so it the payoff is great i mean it's really worth it so this is the last of it we get this through then we're going to clean up put the grinder away and we'll bust out the food saver and i'll show you that process all right and there you have it it's about 20 pounds of fresh ground venison, 80-20 blend. This is gonna go in the fridge, we're gonna clean up, and then we'll start vacuum sealing it all. I'm gonna take all of these um, pounds of venison and I'm gonna ball them up into the sizes that I want, the weights I want. We're gonna do one pound increments, right? So I take my Argali game bag, doesn't weigh anything and I'm gonna weigh out and I just well, after a few of these you get the feel it's weird but you get the feel of what of what you would like right and I don't mind if it's slightly over a pound I don't I, it doesn't really bother me so that's 1.3 again because like I said my we're gonna eat it so if I have a little extra I used to be like, ah, man, I want an exact pound. It doesn't matter to me. And I just do this all at once because it makes the process a lot smoother when you start packaging it up, right? So you're not like going back and forth and do, you do it all at once. You ball them all up, you put them in the fridge, keep letting them stay cold. And then you start prepping your food saver. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. At the end of this, we're going to have just bars of gold, man. It's one of my favorite things. I put them in my freezer. We'll stack them in bars of gold. And then I got a milk crate in there, and I'll just fill it with all the ground. I'll show you what that looks like, but it's just awesome. This looks so nice. Go in there, grab some out for dinner. And then when I'm done with this Argali game bag, I'll wash it and I'll just let it dry. And it dries quick. I've got three, I'd like about six. I've been trying to get them uh, on their website and they've just been sold out for weeks. You know, hunting season, man, it's just hard to get your hands on stuff. These things are gaining in popularity. But I carry them in my kill kit and it's just, it's just awesome. It's awesome to have. Awesome to have in the field, man. Nobody I hunt with uses game bags. I started with cheesecloth because back in the day, that's all you could find. That's what I was watching Ranella use in the beginning, cheesecloth. But they reflect, drawstring, keep them from bugs and debris. You could hang them up. They sell them in elk bags. These are the smaller game bags. But I can put two deer hams in there. All right, folks, and there you have it. Meatballs, gigantic meatballs. All right, we've got a food saver here. And you could usually get these online, Amazon, whatever. This one has an integrated cutter, which is nice. I usually cut and then I will vacuum seal one end. You roll it out, you drop a seal real quick. It only takes a few seconds. And then I snip and I move off or to the next step. Once we get all of them laid out, then we're just dropping them all in and then we're sealing them, wrap them in butcher paper. The reason I wrap wrapped in butcher paper because as this vacuum seal paper or plastic sits in the freezer, sometimes bones poke it, sometimes it just breaks down because of the cold over time. And so you know, you're in a rush, you take something out, you put it out to defrost in the fridge, you don't put it on a plate and you put it just in this and you get home and there's blood all over the fridge from it defrosting. So I like to take that extra step. It seems like the butcher paper really safeguards the plastic wrap and you don't have to worry about coming home and cleaning up a mess before dinner. So we got our bags here and we got our meat. What we do is just take it, smush it down. All right, kind of like a tube. Just like that, off to the side. Now we're just rolling them into tubes. You hit moist and then you vacuum seal. She said that I didn't screw them up too bad, so that's good. Gold, bricks of gold. This is the first stuff to come out and be used up. All the new venison ground. Oh, I've got like a pound and a half of elk, so that's gold, because we don't get elk much at all. Actually, that's the first of it. And this is all gonna go in and then it goes back into the freezer. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we have our filled milk crate here. It's gonna go, oh, it's gonna go in the fridge right here. I picked up some ground bison from the grocery store today, but it sits on that little shelf. That, that's it guys, start to finish on how we do ground venison or ground beef or ground whatever we grind. I hope you found it informative and encouraging that you can grind your own meat. You don't have to always buy it from the grocery store. Uh, it's just a great thing to be able to know how to do and it's relatively easy. You need a few pieces of equipment. But like I said, you could get those over time and you don't have to get an expensive grinder out the gate. You can get a hand grinder. I've actually even thought about investing in a hand grinder just in case the electricity went out for some reason at some point. It's just a good option to have. It's relatively affordable. LEM, I think, sells one still. But you don't have to have a big bite to grind your own meat. And there's just something that makes you feel primal about grinding your own meat. And it's even better when you grind your meat and then you have a burger 
from the grind that you just made. So anyway, get out there and navigate the wild.